but we start in Toronto, Canada. Mike, we've not been there for what seems like forever with everything that happened with the pandemic. It's great to be back in Toronto, a fantastic fight city. We've got a lot of local talent on this particular card as well and a couple of title fights to get everybody excited. We will start with the main event, Sean Strickland in your old division, the champion defending against Strickers Duplessis. They had a little bit of a go at the back end of last year, let's be honest, without the gloves. They finally put the gloves on and they are going to be throwing down for our entertainment. It's going to be a belter. Listen, let me tell you, what a way to start off the new year. UFC 297, this main event is just spectacular. Sean Strickland, the middleweight champion of the world, the man that went out there, shocked the entire planet when he beat Israel Adesanya, almost finished him in the first round. He's not shy of being controversial. He doesn't mince his words. And going up against Drickers Duplessis, a man that is just phenomenal. This man is so violent, so strong, action-packed. Six wins in the UFC, five stoppages, and I think he's only got one or two decisions on his entire record this man is a finishing machine and this main event going down in Toronto is going to be spectacular as you say the, the, the Canadian fans they're some of the best on the planet they love mixed martial arts so this crowd this atmosphere it's going to be special Mike brings up a really valid point there about Sean Strickland being the guy that created the biggest upset I suppose of last year and maybe shocked the world in his win against Israel Adesanya but Trickers du Plessis Nick did a similar thing because nobody was really backing him going into his fight with Robert Whittaker. These two guys have been underdogs in the in the past and they've risen to an occasion which lends to the narrative of this story. Exactly that. You know, we sat down a year ago, almost at a day to kick off 2023. And to use Mike's terminology, if you'd have said to me, Jickers Duplessis and Sean Strickland are going to be fighting for the UFC middleweight title against one another, I said you are out of your mind. Absolutely no chance. But what a 12 months both of them had. You know, he absolutely hit the ground running did Sean Strickland with that win over Imamov back in January. That really did start the UFC calendar for the entire year. He added to that with the Magomedov performance. Then, of course, he steps in at late notice, defeats Izzy. Sensational stuff. Flip side of the coin, Duplessis. What, what a run that was. Till at the end of 2022. Brunson, the stoppage. Whitaker, the stoppage. Come on. Duplessis and Strickland probably went into all those fights as heavy underdogs and won every single one of them. They're here and they're here on merit. Yeah, and they don't like each other, which always lends uh, to a good fight, Mike. We saw them, obviously, at the back end of last year. Nobody wants it to spill out into the crowd. And Dan has taken full um, ownership of sitting them next to each other. But you put two fighters that are going to be fighting each other next to each other you can expect a little bit of something. They had a little bit of a go in the crowd in the final show at, in Las Vegas. And it kind of adds to the narrative of what we're expecting in Toronto come UFC 297. Yeah, look, listen, it's nasty. We don't want to see that kind of stuff, but let's be honest, that's going to sell pay-per-views because everybody wants to see this fight because now not only is it two brilliant fighters, but it's also very, very personal. Let's remember, Drickus Duplessis, bit of a low blow at the press conference as well, making fun of the childhood trauma that Sean Strickland enjoyed. But Sean mm. Strickland, as I say, he's talking about everybody, so what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But words aside, the fight will be spectacular. Drickus Duplessis is the rightful number one contender. His rail came in and squared up against him when he beat Whitaker, right? That shocked all of us. We were there in person. The way that he dropped Robert Whitaker, the way that he was just willing to stand and go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and that's what he does. Drickers brings such such a physicalness to every single fight. He's big, he's strong, he swings with knockout intentions with every single shot, right? That jab that he dropped Whitaker with was beautiful, and the, the combination that followed was... It was amazing. I mean, textbook stuff, upstairs to the head, rips to the body. That falls Whitaker, sits him down. On top of that, he's very strong. He's got great grappling. If he gets taken down, he can get back to his feet. But I'll be honest, in this fight, I don't think we're going to see much of that. Sean Strickland is the champion of the world. He beat Israel Adesanya, who is known for being probably one of the most sophisticated strikers that we have in all of mixed martial arts. Beat him at his own game. Over five rounds. Almost finished him in the first round. The fight before that, he went out there and stopped uh, Abus Magomedov. The relevance of that is that now Sean believes in his power. He knows he can drop people. He knows he can stand and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people like Israel because before that, he used to have a very jab-heavy style. Jab and jog, move out of range, and as the fight progressed, as he got into the later rounds, then he would start to turn up the volume a little bit. But when you start dropping people, when you start finishing people, you believe in the power that you have. But that's going to be dangerous against Drickus Duplessis. Who hits harder? I'll tell you right now, Drickus Duplessis has more firepower in the fists. 
Uh, when it comes to grappling, I don't think that's really going to even matter. Drickish could take him down if he wants to. Sean's very accomplished on the ground. I believe these two men are going to meet in the centre of the octagon. They're going to throw down. It's very, very personal. Sean spoke about it on a podcast with Theo Vaughn about how angry he was. So he's going to see red. He saw red in the octagon. And when the referee says fight, he's going to go right at him. And you know what? Drickish Duplessis has no problem with that whatsoever because that is the kind of fight that he shows up for every single time. Both guys, Nick, have got a real unorthodox style, haven't they? The way that they approach their striking. Obviously, as Mike was just explaining there, Sean has a very unorthodox style, but so does Drickus. He's very wingy with the way that he throws his shots. Yeah, but he's very accomplished and he's very, you know, it's very effective. You know, even before he got into MMA, Jick has had an extensive K1 career, uh, although, you know, on an amateur K1 level, but he was very accomplished. And he's a winner. He's been a winner his entire life. You know, he proved himself to be the best fighter in Africa when he fought on EFC Africa, multiple weight world champion. That wasn't enough. He moved over to Poland and competed in KSW mm. and won in KSW as well. That wasn't enough. He wanted to come to the UFC, wanted to make a statement. He wanted to be the first fighter based, living, training in Africa to win a UFC belt. And now he's just one win away. And so far, he hasn't put a foot wrong. He's had six fights and six clear wins. Most of them stoppages as well, as Mike's pointed out. There's no blueprint necessarily to beat this guy. And even though he's unorthodox and even though he looks like he tires out and he's, you know, against Brunson, he was all but done in the first round. You know, against Tilly, flatlined at one point. Against, even against Whitaker early on, he was taken down quite comfortably. But there's just no quitting him. And he just keeps going. He just keeps pushing the bar, pushing the bar. And against Whitaker, you know, out of the two of them, even though the Adesanya performance came from absolutely nowhere for Sean Strickland, I think the performance from Drickus against Robert Whitaker was more impressive. Because on that night when Strickland won the belt, I'm kind of like, what is he doing? Why is he going backwards? Why is he letting Strickland fight his kind of fight? Why is he doing this for 25 minutes? And it kind of ended the fight puzzle going... My God, Sean Strickland's middleweight champion of the world. When Drickers beat Robert Whitaker, I was like, oh my word, there is a new kid on the block. He's just battered the number one contender, the top guy out there, the guy right below Izzy. That was more of a statement for me. But you're right, unorthodox, both of them, very unusual fighting styles. Both like to go forward. Both like to be on the front foot. They get in trouble when they go backwards. It's got fireworks written all over it. With all that in mind, Mike, what are the keys to victory for both guys? Well, listen, uh, Sean Strickland's got to maintain the range. And that's going to be the problem because if he, he is too angry, if he's too emotional, he's not going to do that. Normally, he fights behind the jab and he jogs a lot. He uses all of that space inside the octagon. I think that's what he has to do. If he stands and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drickus Duplessis, he's going to lose. I, 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 I'll, I have no problem saying that. I like Sean Strickland. I think it's incredible what he's achieved, you know to almost being written off in the welterweight division to then reinvent himself as a middleweight and come out and have some sensational wins. He's beaten some great opponents. He had a very razor-close fight with uh, Jared Cannonier as well, remember, before he went on this win streak becoming the champion. Um, he's very technical. He has a good jab. He has nice boxing and he's a hard worker. A couple of weeks after his fight, when he beat Izzy, I was at the Performance Institute. I was calling a fight, so I went in for a little workout. I had to show Alan Joe Band the ropes, tap him out a few times and stuff like that. Who's in there? <laughs> There's Sean Strickland, working hard, right? You would think just winning the belt, he's not going to fight anytime soon, but he was straight back in the gym, okay? Probably getting ready for a drink or so, whoever it was going to be, because the man is very, very disciplined. He's not out there partying. Yes, he says a lot of wild stuff, but he's a very disciplined man when it comes down to to it when it's all said and done so he's got to use that jab and he's got to go back to kind of the old style of Sean Strickland because if he does stand there with Drickus Duplessis as I say a man that loads up with every single shot a man that's finished 19 out of 20 opponents 19 out of 20 9 knockouts 10 submissions if he stands there and plays that game with Drickus he's going to lose the UFC security team are going to have their work cut out this week oh. at press conferences and various other meets. No <laughs> doubt about that. Keep these men away from each other until that cage door shuts. That's all I'll say. UFC 297's main event for the middleweight championship of the world. Sean Strickland defending against Drikus Duplessis. What a wonderful way to kick off the year.